Hey guys, this is Tonner and today we've got the patch notes including the new kits for the upcoming Void, uh, sorry, well, Void Knight and Gwenum. So we've got Extreme X-Men and Hive Mind here. We've got a new costume, the Echo's Family Legacy costume, which actually looks pretty good. It's based on the TV show, I believe. Uh, it's more of like a traditional kind of um, Native American costume for her, which is really cool. Um, so there's going to be showcase events for both the Extreme X-Men and for Hive Mind. The Escape from Kiln is confirmed coming with 40 cells there. New features, so we've got new challenge tiers. Let's see if they actually add them in this time. We've had new challenge tiers before and then they don't add them in. Um, the legendary events are going to be getting upgrades. So they're going to all move down to unlock at two stars. So Iron Man, Doc Ock, Nick Fury, Magneto, Star-Lord and Phoenix, and then Shuri and Invisible Woman. Uh, Jubilee is expanded requirements to tech heroes. So they've actually changed the requirements for some of them too. So um, Doc Ock requires Wave 1 or a Defender. Nick Fury requires Cosmic Villain or Heroes for Hire. Star-Lord just requires Cosmic Heroes. Phoenix requires Mystic Controllers rather than just Villains. Invisible Bloom requires Mercenaries. This, this one here doesn't make sense because like Mercenary or Tech, tech Heroes here. This is weird. There's, this is huge changes though. This is huge changes. Um, guarantee there's going to be people who are going to complain about this because uh, they they had to go and level whatever for things. Like you had to go at level X-Force, but now you don't need it. I don't, I don't mind it. It's a good catch-up mechanic. Um, they also lowered a whole bunch of characters down to two-star unlocks that are required for legendaries. Some bug fixes in here as well. Um, but here's the kits. So, Gwenum is going to clear barrier on attack. Um, she's going to flip positives into negatives and apply defense down. She's going to apply bleeds and then generate ability energy with a basic. And she even does that on the assist and counter too. So, that's really nice. Her special here, she's going to gain the opposite of all negative effects, excluding bleed on the primary target. So, that's like Andy Venom. Um, She's going to stun. She's going to attack the adjacent targets. And then she's also going to generate ability energy. And in rage, she's going to spread them around. Look, this is anti-venom's ultimate, except it's a little bit more of an AoE, basically. That's that's interesting. Oh, and it stuns. And then the ultimate here, she's going to clear barrier from all targets. She's going to barrier all herself, all hive mind, and all spider-verse allies for 15 percent she's going to attack all enemies for 400 damage and apply offense down she's going to apply offense up and defense up to herself all hive mind and all spider verse she's going to apply stun and then generate ability energy and then she's also going to get extra focus per symbiote ally for that and then finally her passive here when this character or hive mind ally drops below 50 percent she's going to chuck some evades onto them she's going to heal on turn um to heal herself and all symbiote allies. Uh, when her health is above 50% chance, she's got extra dr dodge. And then when it's below 50% chance, she's got extra drain. She's going to gain focus and she's going to give those hive mind and spider verse allies hope focus as well. Then we've got void knight. So he's going to attack um, with the primary target for the basic, flip some negatives into positives. If they have, uh, if he has no negatives, then he's going to flip uh, positives into negatives on the primary target instead. And then in raids, always flip those positives into negatives on the primary target, regardless of if he has negative effects or not. And he's going to do that on his counter attack and assist too. His special here, he's going to steal ability energy from the primary target. In raids, he's going to steal up to three ability energy. He's going to attack the primary and adjacent uh, for piercing and apply defense down. His ultimate here, he's going to pull all enemies up to two spaces towards the primary target. So this is like a Magneto ult. Um, then attack the primary and targets within two spaces and flip if, uh, positive effects into negative. He's going to flip all positive effects on all on Spider-Verse enemies. That's an interesting one. Why is he specifically anti Spider Verse there? I don't know. That's that's a really weird one. Um, like for in raids, like if he was like in Cosmo Crucible, that would like make a lot more sense. 
I guess he will be able to do it in Cosmic Crucible, so uh, he's going to apply Ability Block to uh, for two turns to the primary target, but then in Rage, he's going to Ability Block all of them. And then he's going to gain extra focus, it's unavoidable, and he can't be counterattacked. And then his passive here is going to, on spawn, generate Ability Energy for Hive Mind, and then more Ability Energy for himself, uh, 1 plus 1 Ability Energy per Hive Mind character for himself. At the end of his turn, he's going to heal himself. When enemy takes damage from bleed, he's going to heal out all of those Hive Mind allies. So this is going to be a team that's going to be reliant on negative effects, which means you're going to need, you know, stars and gear on them and stuff um, to make sure that you've got the focus to be able to land it. He's going to gain max health and give Hive Mind max health. He's going to gain armor, give Hive Mind max armor. In Raids, he's going to apply speed up to himself and all Hive Mind on spawn. On spawn, he's going to fill his speed bar by 25% and apply slow to the enemy with the highest speed. Enemies can't gain immunity. That's really nice. So that's a way to be able to stop them um, from, you know, stopping the negative Vex, essentially. And then Hive Mind and Hive Mind are going to gain extra max health and armor. We've got the Venom rework here. So his basic now is going to flip two positives. Uh, that looks the exact same. It's just dealing extra damage. Yeah, that's that's the exact same. It's just extra damage and they've slightly reworded it, basically. Um, and his uh, counterattack can't be dodged. So that's new. Uh, his special here, it's going to be this part here. It's the exact same. This extra bonus attack is new. Prolong the negative effects. Um, and the attack can't be dodged is new on his special there. His ultimate here is going to deal additional damage, a fair chunk of additional damage, and apply offense down for two turns. And he's also going to clear negative effects from himself and the most injured ally with that. And then his passive here, he's applying defense up on turn to himself and all symbiotes, <clears throat> which I thought he did already. Oh, it's, it's not reliant on his health anymore. So he's just going to do that all the time. He's also going to gain speed. So throughout, he, he's slowly going to get faster. We've got Carnage here, who probably needed the biggest rework of all. His basic now um, in raids doesn't remove the negative effects anymore. It used to remove all negative effects. It doesn't anymore in raids. And it's going to deal a lot of extra damage um, to adjacent targets. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, Cyclops, we don't care about. Wait, is that the only rework for Carnage? Oh no, that's his special that removes it. That's the only rework for Carnage. There's no changes to his ultimate or special or anything like that. I mean, his ultimate or his basic or passive. Okay, Carnage just got the tiniest rework. Um, so I guess Carnage is probably the one that's going to get dropped for uh, Super Scroll, <laughs> I guess. Um, but that's it for today, guys. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think. Have a great day and goodbye.